February 2023. Wow, time flows so fast. Okay, let me take you to 10 October 2010. I remember clearly it was a snowy day and my family, they were sitting around dining table and I was thinking how to open up about my decision that I am leaving my country for higher education. I remember that year because of the global protest in my country, uh, many universities did not accept any student. I was really feeling sad and disheartened. I remember with the eyes welled up with tears, I met, went to meet my music teacher, or I can say my guru. He looked at me and he asked, why you're so sad? <laughs> I told him, I don't know what should I do. I lost my hope. He looked at me while having the beautiful Iranian tea, and he asked me, what you want to do or where you see yourself after 10 years. I looked at him when he was polishing the beautiful Persian music by name of mu music instrument by name of Kamanje. I looked at him and very firmly I said, I want to see myself educated, brave, wise and independent. He looked at me with a wise and thoughtful face and he said, Whatever decision you make today, it is going to create your future. So you should be very mindful. I was very sad. I just asked him, you tell me what should I do? He told me with very beautiful smile on his face, go to India to not only complete your education, to learn how to live the life. Without hesitation, I have accepted, but that time, only the thing I knew about India was the name of the Shola movie and the name of Raj Kapoor. Now, I landed in Mumbai and the struggle has started. I was unable to communicate because in my country, English is not the language of the country. I looked at people around and I started shaking. What should I do now? Human being needs to communicate, and unable to communicate, for me, was a very great threat to my survival in India. I understood at that moment. I remember when days were passing, so many times I asked myself whether my decision was correct or no. So many times I looked at myself that I am unable to talk with anyone. I am unable to cope with the culture, with the food. Now I like all the foods, but that time it was very difficult for me. I remember the uh, first few days, it was really challenging days for me. Out of tension, I got fever. I was waiting for an agent to come and help me for changing my currency. He did not come till third day. I remember the day I got up, I looked at myself into the mirror, and I said, I have eyes to see. I have a mouth to talk, and I have a legs to walk. And I came out of the home. After one hour, I found a bank, I went inside, I changed my currency, and now I have a rupees in my hands. While coming back, I saw a shop, and I have decided to do some shopping for my new home. I went inside, and with so much broken language, I have decided to purchase some stuff, and a shopkeeper asked me, write your address for a delivery purpose. Oof. I did not know what to say. I looked at him and I said, no address. <laughs> he was thinking I am joking. Basically, he was shocked. And later on, he told me I assumed you were joking. I told him, I can see and I can show you with my eyes. And I had only one choice, to sit with the vehicle and show them the way to deliver my stuff at home. Definitely, this was my first victory. I remember those times when I was looking at the change, I was just trying to embrace the change. And I remember the Rumi's quote, don't resist to any change and live the life fully. 
In the college time, when I used to see my Indian beautiful friends, they were talking so fluently, and I was always getting that motivation. Oh, I can also talk like them. And of course, with the great compliment and support, they were always motivating me. Just, you know, you have come alone all the way, and you are trying to get the success. I have studied a lot, hence I graduate with the high grade of first class and distinction. I remember that year I came across the beautiful you know, incident in my life. Definitely, um, I was in the right track of academic growth, but uh, I wanted to know something more deep, and the thirst of knowing more about myself was increasing day by day. And I came across the beautiful, amazing, ancient Indian knowledge of yoga. And I can call myself very lucky because I have trained under so many great yogis and teachers in India. While practicing asanas, I learned I can see each and every corner of my body. And now I am able to be much more mindful to see anything happen in my life, including my body. The light of yoga has changed my life, definitely. But still, something was missing. I knew that I am a pampered girl and I have to train myself because I had everything that you can imagine in my country. I was in my comfort zone, but still I wanted to train myself. So I have decided to travel alone. I had so much fear. Traveling alone with a train first time in my life. And I have moved from Pune to Delhi with a train which took almost 20 hours to reach from Delhi to Punjab. And in Punjab, I met a beautiful, old, kind man who helped me to see so many places in Amritsar. In this strange country, I became friends with the strangers, and I experienced the trust with them. My, tra my uh, trip was uh, not pre-planned, so I was following the sign of nature. Whomsoever were giving the good suggestion to me, I was just listening and purchasing ticket and go to the next destination. The old kind man, he told me, go to Maklat Ganj, you have to go there. And now I am sitting in the oldest bus in the beautiful road. Distance was so long, and so many foreigners like me, they were sitting in the bus, but I was very hungry. After a few hours, a guy came into the bus with a big tray of sandwiches. I looked at the sandwiches, and definitely it was not the sandwiches that I could ever decide to have, but definitely it was most tastiest sandwich which I ever had in my life. After a few hours, we have reached to Maklat Ganj, beautiful place, such a peaceful place. And for the first time in my life, I met His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I learned from him, the kindness is only the religion, and I, I understood the importance of the kindness and love in my life. After Maklat Ganj, I headed to beautiful Rishikesh, practicing yoga every day with the great yogis, and every evening sitting next to the beautiful Ganga River and looking at the devotion of people, which taught me I have to be committed in my life. And I believe that all of us, we have to be committed in our life. I saw many sadhus, many practices, many paths, and I know one thing, everywhere is paradise if we really look within. After more than two months traveling, I have decided to go back to Pune and uh, decide for the next step. Now I want to complete my PhD, but not in India. I prefer to go out. And another great incident of my life again happened to me because I believe that so many times I have decided to go back, but something held me back. And this time, I met love of my life, Nikhil, in meditation center in Pune. He is definitely not only my husband, he is my best friend, but more than anything, he is a person who has given me the most precious gift to me. 
he introduced the Vipassana meditation to me, and he encouraged me to go for the 10 days retreat. Wow, very difficult practice. I have gone pleasant, but difficult. In the retreat, I learned from S.A. Goenga Guruji that the nature of mind is changing, and whatever happens in our life is bound to disappear, which definitely helped me a lot. I remember when Nikhil was talking to me about this beautiful knowledge of equanimity, wisdom, empathy, and compassion, which definitely helped me to be a person who I am. I remember when I have started my PhD, definitely so many challenges arise in that time. So many challenges. I have started the interview. I have gone for a different exam. I have collected so many data. And finally, I got my PhD. But I knew that what is helping me there, that anything arise in the life bound to disappear and nothing is permanent forever. Two months back for my 48th birthday, I went for a solo trip to Aroville in Pondicherry. I was looking at myself, so many success, so many failures, so many challenges. Now I am standing as a doctorate who practice psychology. I work with so many people. I work with refugees. I work with multiple TV channels. I meet people every day, and I can see all of us, we have a challenges, we have a difficulties. But I ask myself, what was that key factor that helps me to come all the way to here? There is a personality style uh, which introduced by Kobasa, and that style is hardiness. Hardy person is a person who remain healthy under a stressful situation. I remember and I believe that since the time I came to India, I have been practicing this pattern and this style. And I can say all of us, we can learn. A hardy person looking at the challenge, looking at the difficult and stressful situation as an opportunity to grow. A hardy person knows he or she has a partial control or in, in any life uh, incidents. And more important than anything, a hardy person is committed to the daily life. If you are hardy, it doesn't mean you will not face any challenges. Definitely you face, but you will remain healthy and you will never hurt yourself or others. All of us, we want to be happy. And happiness is, I guess, the common aim for all of us. There are a few lines from Venerable uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, which always inspired me. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. And no need in hurry. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Somewhere to go, something to do. And no need in hurry. And no need in hurry. And no need in hurry. Twelve years back, I was unable to talk in English. Now I am standing on TEDx platform to tell all of you, life has given me thousand reasons to give up, pack my bag, and go back from where I came from. But because of my hardy nature, I have given the life trillion reasons to continue. Thank you.